Hi and welcome to another Unity from Scratch looking at mobile development. In this video, I'm going to start looking at the touch mechanisms. In the previous few videos, we looked at the math geometry behind touching an object on the screen and actually moving it around using the mouse. And while this is really good for single touches for mobile devices, once you start involving more than uh, one touch, you have to flip over to the Unity input touch controls. So I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to access those touch controls and to deal with multiple touches that are going on on the screen. So to begin with, I've got a empty 2D project. Actually, it's not really empty, is it? It's, it's mostly empty, but there's a text box as you can see. I've added in the top corner here um, and I've just made it the whole size of the canvas. I'm going to use this text box to show up any um, debugging information because when you're running something on your mobile device, you can't sort of see debug.log lines happening um, on it. So I always put a text box here. I can send any messages I like and print them onto that box. Also in this project, I've added a empty game object called a touch manager and to that I've attached touch manager script that I'll show you the contents of. So it's touch manager, C sharp script, capital T, capital M. Inside it, it's very short. So we've got um, hold of the UI library here because we're using the um, text component that's on the screen to print stuff out from it. And all we're doing inside the update is reporting on the number of touches that have occurred on the screen. And input.touchCount returns this number of touches. Before when we were trying to determine if the mouse had clicked, we'd use input.getMouse down um, or you know get mouse button. But with the touches, there's nothing kind of like that um, per se. And the way that you capture or deal with touches is first of all to make sure there has been a touch count. And inside the update, we therefore first say if input.touchCount is greater than zero, then we will deal with whatever touches we've got to deal with. So just to begin with, I've created this really simple program that you can run and push out to your device to see how it works. And what it's going to do is report on the number of touches that are happening on the screen in this text box up here. So to link this uh, text, which is attached to the canvas here with our touch manager, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping that over to there. Now, make sure that you've got uh, an Android or an iOS, iOS build, whatever you're working with, and that you've got a bundle ID in your project, as we talked about in the first tutorial in this playlist. When you run it on the screen, you'll see the numbers go up as you put different finger touches down onto the device. And in this case, it's going from zero to 10 when I've got all of my fingertips touching the actual tablet. To explore how different finger touches is going to affect you touching the screen and moving an object around in 3D space, I've updated the touch manager code to integrate the stuff we've looked at in previous tutorials that we use the mouse for. But now, if you want to start using different fingers to move stuff around, you've got to get those fingers individually. To replicate the exact same thing that we did with the mouse for moving the ball around, I've modified the touch manager code. So I've added a sphere into the environment. Now we'll just go through the touch manager code and have a look how it has changed. But before we do that, I just want to talk about the touch phases that are in Unity. Now, if you have a look at this image that I've created here, you'll see that there's three different phases that a touch goes through just in the same way that a mouse press and mouse move has. So for these touch phases, there's when you first put your finger down on the screen, which creates a began phase. When you move your finger whilst holding it down, it's a moved phase. And when you release your 
finger off of the touch screen. It's an ended phase. And by testing for these three different phases of the touch in our code, we can control what our program is doing. It's exactly the same as the mouse pressing and mouse releasing. So the touch manager code now looks like this, where it's a combination of the one we created in a previous tutorial and the current one with the touches in it. So um, we start off by needing the game object pointer itself. So this is the variable we're going to grab hold of the object that we've pressed or touched. Then we have a plane to determine the um, plane the object's going to move in when we start moving it around on the screen and we also have an offset. I don't want to go into too much detail about these because I did those in the previous two tutorials so just have a look through those uh, if you're interested in the exact details and haven't already seen it. Now we have this ray uh, generate mouse ray function that we've used before. Now we can reuse this for generating a touch ray and um, this time I'm actually going to send it through the touch position on the screen rather than relying on the mouse position because remember we can have up to 10 fingers touching the screen so it's not just going to be the one uh, and though so by making this um, a variable to pass into this function we can find the ray from any particular touch on the screen. So having got that touch pause, that then replaces our input.mouse position in these two lines here, where we're calculating a ray from the near plane of the camera through to the far plane of the camera according to the current projection that it's set in. So whether it's orthographic or um, whether it's perspective. And then we return that ray. So that's the only changes with that particular function. Now, if we go down to update, this is where you'll see a lot of change and it will look like a lot more code, but there's not really much extra that I've put in here. So um, we've got our text being updated to the number of touches on the screen, which is kind of neither here nor there really, as far as this goes, it doesn't have any impact on the functionality of this code. Now remember I said that this input.touch count gives us how many fingers are down on the device. So if it's um, not greater than zero, we really don't want to process anything. So we can put this if statement around all of the input code here, which cover our three phases that I just spoke about. The first one is if get touch zero dot phase equals phase touch phase dot began. So this is that moment that you've pressed down on the screen. This get touch here of zero gets the first touch that has been registered on the screen. So if you've put down five fingers on the screen, it's only going to be picking up that first touch. Interestingly, if you have two, if you have one finger touching the screen, and then you touch down with another finger so that there's two fingers on the screen. The first finger will still be finger number zero. Then if you um, touch down with the second finger, remove the first finger, then the second finger becomes the touch zero. Okay, so zero is always getting the first thing that registers on the screen. It doesn't ever go away, but it will swap over if it loses the first one that it had and there's another one to pick up. So we're only working with the first finger in this point here. If you actually wanted things to happen, if you had two fingers on the screen and you wanted the second finger to be in control, then you could put one in here, which would pick up the second finger mouse movements, also sort of touch movements. Right, so um, we're generating the mouse ray using the position of that finger on the screen. And then we're using that ray and casting it out into the world like we did before, grabbing hold of something if it gets hit. In this case, it's going to be that sphere. Then we're also calculating the offset as before, but with the touch position here. Right, so that's the began phase where we actually pick up an object. In the next phase, uh, which is equivalent to a mouse moving, this is when you're dragging your finger across the screen, we're doing touch phase dot moved. 
and also checking they'll actually have hold of something that we can move around. And at that point, we then use the get touch of finger one at its position to create the ray into the world and then move the object around. Then finally, we go into the last phase, which is when the touch has ended and you've got hold of an object, it will then release that object for you. So if you save that and build it out to your device, uh, you'll be able to see how that works. So one finger will move the ball around beneath it. And if you add a second finger, you see it doesn't have any influence on the ball. But if you remove the first finger, the second finger takes over as the first finger and the ball snaps directly to that position. Now let's just go back into the code and what I want to do is use the second finger to move the ball around. So I'll change the get touch to one and all of these other ray positioning things to one. Now we'll save it and build it out to the Android device to see how that reacts. With one finger pressed down and dragged over the ball, you'll see that we can't actually pick the ball up while there's only one finger on the screen. But if we push down with one finger, then we can use a second finger to grab the ball and move it around. If, however, the first finger is removed from the screen, leaving just one, it will no longer be able to control the ball because it is no longer get touch one. And that's the three touch phases in Unity.